Welcome to Scanner School, a podcast where we teach you everything that you needed to know about the scanner radio hobby. This is episode 16, and today we are reviewing scanners that you can use to monitor P25 and P25 trunk systems. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to session number 16 of the Scanner School podcast, a podcast where we teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur call is W2LIE. Today we're going to talk about some P25 scanners. And uh, again, this is something we've been building to. In the last two weeks, we talked about an introduction of P25, followed by Phase 1, Phase 2, and X2 TDMA last week. So this week, it's only uh, you know natural that we get into some of the radios that you can go out and you can purchase today that will allow you to talk uh, or allow you to listen to Phase 2 talk groups. So, And that's, that's the stress here, is the Phase 2 talk groups. There's, um, there's still two radios out there that are current that will allow you to listen to Phase 1 talk groups, but not Phase 2. And that's the Whistler 1040 and the WS1065. So those two radios we're not really going to review or talk about today because I personally feel that if you're going to get into a new radio at this time, you should go and get something that's going to support Phase 2 talk groups. And really the reason for that is it's going to future-proof you. There's really, for the price difference, at the, at the price point of the 1065 and the Phase 1 stuff, you're already getting into the Phase 2 capable radios. So it really makes sense just to go into that. Um, that's not to knock the WS1065. I own one of those. I'm happy with the radio. I use it. I think the sound quality on it is great. And I do like the way that uh, it sounds out of the speaker. I think it's got a nice, rich sound compared to the unit in line. But again, that radio does not support phase two, where my Uniden newer or current, my current radios from Uniden that you can go out and purchase today um, support phase two. Now, again, the WS1065 at the time of this recording is a current radio. And that's all we're looking at. Again, it's just current radios. So you can go out, buy new in the box today. So uh, we just talked about, again, two weeks prior. So at scannerschool.com slash session 14 you can go and listen to our introduction to P25, where we talk about the building blocks of the P25 network and infrastructure. On session 15, scannerschool.com slash session 15, we talked about phase one, phase two, and X2 TDMA trunking systems, as well as some of the, the conventional stuff and how to set up and tweak the phase two settings in your scanner radio. So if you have not yet listened to either one of those, session 14 or 15, uh, I would suggest going back and reviewing those two sessions. Now, again, you can do that uh, via the iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or via on our website as well. So moving forward, let's take a look at some of the radios that we can go out and we can buy today. And this was something that I thought I could sit down and, and, and knock out. But the more I started thinking about these radios, um, the more it was kind of like opening up a can of worms, right? When I went through and I went my um, went through my introduction or my my um, basic scanner reviews that that we did in an earlier podcast, um, and I'll, that was on session number six. We did uh, a basic scanner review, and also on session number twelve, we did a trunk tracker reviews. Well, we just looked at scanners that supported those systems. But when it comes to the digital stuff, I was like, well, maybe I could just do what, what supports, you know, phase two trunking or really not much else. But certain manufacturers came up with upgrades that kind of like expanded on what we were looking at. So what I decided to do is just take a look at what's left on our plate here when it comes to current scanners. Again, these are radios you can buy today. And on the on air date of this podcast, we're looking at April 10th, 2018. So the radios that you can go out to out on April 10th and by are the radios that we're going to review. We're not looking at anything yet that's going to be released in a couple months from now, uh, SDS 100, uh, because they're not out yet. They're not finalized, and um, I'm sure things may change between now and then. So I'm going to leave a lot of speculation for another time, and uh, we'll talk about that radio when the time is right, when it comes out, and uh, I've been able to use it for a little bit and get some hands-on experience with it. 
which again, I've put that up there as well. If um, I'm looking at doing a live unboxing of the SDS 100 when it becomes available. So in order to view my live unboxing, it just requires you to go to my Facebook page, which is scannerschool.com slash Facebook. You don't need to have a Facebook account to view what I do on the Facebook page. And what I do on there is every Saturday, uh, I, I go on at 11 o'clock my local time, which would be uh, about 4 o'clock UTC or GMT. We're going to talk about that in coordinated time. So no matter what time zone you're in, if you understand how UTC works, the time zone should be universal to you, which is why they call it the universal time. And um, we're going to have to move it this coming Saturday, April 14th. i got to shift the time ahead to 1 p.m. Eastern time which will put you at about 5 p.m. universal time. All right, so um, the time's going to change, but if you go to facebook.com slash scanner school, you'll already see the um, the link to get on and get into the waiting room for the live uh, broadcast I'm going to do on Saturday. But to, uh, to kind of go back a little bit to what we were just talking about here, yes, so on that Facebook page and in those live sessions, I will be doing a live unboxing of an SDS 100 when I finally get my pause on one. So backing up a bit, back to our P25 radio discussion. So let's take a look at um, one of or two of the earlier ones into show here. Well, maybe not one of the earlier ones, but one of the um, the entry level side of things when it comes to this. We're looking at the Uniden BCD 325P2 and its desktop cousin, the BCD996P2. Now, the BCD996P2 is basically an upgrade on the existing BCD996XT. And one of the nice things that happened with this radio when they did the upgrade was that they swapped out that funky serial connection on the front of the radio, and I have gone through so many unit and cables um, in fact, I just unboxed a USB one, plugged it in, and I think I had it out for a week and the connector got mashed up and it's useless at this point. $30 down the drain. The, the 996P2 finally has a true USB interface on the front of the scanner. Now, it also keeps that serial interface and the GPS interface on the back of the scanner. So if you do mount your scanners into a rack or something like that and you like a clean look, like I do, you can still plug the scanner in uh, in the back and then interface it with the computer that way. Um, the handheld version, the 325P2, though, that one also is now true USB. No more funny Uniden connection on it. But the drawback with the 325P2 is it does ship with the USB cable, but it doesn't give you the wall board with the USB on one side and the prongs on the other so that you can charge the scanner in the wall. I guess Uniden at this point assumes that everybody owns a smartphone and everybody must have a bunch of these things laying around their house. They don't include it. So you can go out and you can buy one for about three or four bucks on Amazon, or you can just plug it into your computer and let your computer charge your uh, rechargeable batteries that are in the, uh, the scanner. The drawback here, though, is that you cannot charge the scanner and use it at the same time. You can turn the radio off and charge the batteries, or you can leave the radio on and use the external power, but you cannot have it turned on and use batteries at the same time. And that, I believe, has to do with the uh, amount of current that comes off a standard USB port on a computer and there would not be enough current to both operate and charge the uh, battery at the same time. So one thing also to, to note about the Uniden BCD325P2 is that it's a different form factor than the radio it replaced. It replaced the BCD396XT. That old square radio is a dinosaur at this point. It's non-existent. It's been extinct. The form factor on the 325P2 resembles that of the BC 125AT. It runs off of two AA batteries instead of the three that the older 396 used. It has a really nice, larger, clearer display, and I think it's it's also smaller than the 396 was. So and it oh and it also uses a BNC connector. So I think you didn't actually listen to a lot of people who complained about the SMA jack and and uh, some other things, and um, they they carried forward some of the 
upgrades, or I want to say upgrades in air quotes here, that the BC-125 AT brought into the market. Both these radios, the 325 and the 996, they have 25,000 memory locations, DCS, CTCSS, NAC, close call, uh, G GPS, band scope, fire tone outs, weather alert, priority scan, and they all support P25 conventional, phase one, phase two, X2 TDMA, ETEX, LTR, Motorola type one, type two. Um, and the thing is, this is where I got into an issue when I was putting this episode together. With a paid upgrade, the 325 and the 996 will also support DMR or Moto Turbo and EDAX Pro Voice. The 996 P2 also has an IF exchange, which is great. Love it. Basically, what that means is it changes the IF frequency of the internal sampling. So if you have a birdie or something like that going on in uh, wherever you're listening from, by changing the IF, you can change um, how, how the system, and I don't want to get too technical on, on this one, but what ends up happening is the receive frequency is offset by the IF, and it combines with the IF, and that's really what you're listening to. So by changing the IF frequency, you're actually changing the receive frequency itself. And, um, that's, you know, that's, that's the receive frequency that the scanner has to sample in order to give you the true receive frequency. So it may be possible that by shifting the IF, you're shifting the actual receive frequency, and you're losing that priority. So that's why having an IFX in a scanner is something that now I also look forward to or look at when purchasing a radio because I ran into issues with my own uh, setup here on low band where my routers for my internet were causing interference on low band stuff, okay? So the deal is too with the, um, the DMR and the Pro Voice on the 325P2 and 996P2 is it is a paid upgrade. So these radios are about 350 US at this time if you're buying through Amazon. And if you want to support the Scanner to School website, you can use the links that we have in our show notes to purchase one of these scanners from Amazon. Or you could just use our notes and click on those notes for Amazon, but make other purchases and we'll still make a, uh, a small fee on, um, on those sales as well. It's a nice little way to support the Scanner to School podcast. And we'll talk more about how to support us later on in this episode. So shifting gears a bit to one of the radios that I love is the BCD 436 HP. And when I say I love this radio, that's kind of one of those things that maybe it might make people scratch their heads a bit. But I, um, after much resistance, I finally fell in love with the HP interface in the 436 and 536 line. So we're talking about the BCD 436 HP and the BCD 536 HP. Uh, it took me a long time to really warm up to this interface, and it, it really became one of these things that it was something that I needed to learn to embrace. And um, once I finally decided to um, not go so deep in the programming and not start assigning things with system keys and group keys and favorite numbers and just use it basically as a giant, um, I don't know what I want to say, encyclopedia or, or a Rolodex, basically. That's what I'll say. It's, it's a roll of decks of all the banks that I want to listen to, and I can quickly turn them off and on without having to memorize anything because I can go right into the menu system and toggle all my lists off and just toggle on what I want, and that's really why I love this system. Plus, if I'm going somewhere, I can quickly connect it to my computer, drop in what I want to go, and hit go. I hate the zip code and the radius feature. It's not really something that works the way that you expect it to work. Now, for example... I live in Long Island, and everybody's familiar with Long Island. It's it's narrow and long, and from where I'm sitting right here, I could receive Connecticut, or I could receive the city, I could receive two counties, and I could receive, probably if I had an extra outdoor antenna hooked up, I could receive into Jersey. So if I say, here's my zip code, and I want to monitor everything that's five miles around me, it's not everything that's geographically five miles around you. It's everything that you can receive that would come in within a five-mile radius of you. If... You go onto the radio reference database, which is where the Home Patrol gets this information from, and the radius level is set for that transmitter, and it overlaps my area by five miles or within five miles, the scanner is going to monitor that system. So it might say, oh, Bridgeport has a transmitter here that, you know, Bridgeport, Connecticut, that is high powered, and within five miles of my zip code, that's where the radius ends for that transmitter. Well, the home patrol is going to say, okay, that's something I'm going to listen to. It could be something in Jersey. 
very something maybe something that's really strong out of New Jersey. I have no interest in listening to. But because the radius of that frequency in radio reference database was in within five miles or 20 miles or whatever it is I set my radius for, the scanner is going to try to monitor that frequency. So it really helps to go into Sentinel and to set up your scan list and disable the zip code scanning feature of the radio. Again, I understand why they did it, but I'm not a fan of it. Okay. The nice thing, though, again, about the home troll line is the fact that it does pull information out of radio reference, and it makes things really nice and simple to program it if you just want to do a quick drag and drop using the Sentinel software. And again, you can spend a couple hours in there and go and throw it. But that's the that's what we're living in right now when we go down a list of what the other radios are. Um, these radios support, again, Pro Voice. They support uh, Motorola DMR with paid upgrades. And just released this past month is NXDN. So that is something new on the Uniden line. All three are paid upgrades. Now, the Uniden 436HP sits somewhere between $400 and $450. And the Home Patrol is somewhere between $450 and $500, depending on where you buy them from. So just keep those price points in mind. Because if you're going to spend $400, just say $400 on a 436 if you upgrade to uh, Pro Voice, that's another 50. You upgrade to DMR, another 50. You upgrade up to NXDN, it's another 50. So now you spent an extra $150 on your scanner. Now your $400 scanner became a $550 scanner. Okay. Just keep that idea in the back of your mind here. So the, uh, the again, the, the 436 and 536 also has a USB um, connection. It has micro... SD, where it keeps the database stored. It keeps all your favorite lists on there. It does allow you to do logging and discovery modes and also audio recording. And again, that uses the same SD card for all of that. Now, the 536 also has an included Wi-Fi dongle, which means you can go onto your own personal network or it can be an access point. So if you mount your wi- um, your fourth, I'm sorry, if you mount your 536 in the car, with the Wi-Fi in access point mode, that means you can easily put a iOS device like an iPad or an iPhone uh, on your dashboard and then connect directly to the scanner and control the scanner from your iOS device. This was a huge problem for Uniden for a long time because they dragged feet on this for so long, they had a lot of unhappy customers. They released the scanner and promised the Siren app. And those of us who love Android are still waiting for our Siren app. And it's been about four years. So at this point, it's pretty much vaporware and never going to happen. Moving on. The HP2, or the Home Patrol 2, was an upgrade on the original Home Patrol. And the original Home Patrol required an extreme upgrade to do some of the features that are out of the box when it comes to the Home Patrol 2. Um, not really a fan of the Home Patrol 2. If I was going to go with something... Uh, I would jump right into the 436 or 536. The Home Patrol 2 is basically just a touchscreen display. Uh, I use the Home Patrol 1. I just leave it on in the kitchen, and all it does is monitor my conventional fire department here. It's not even being used for uh, for P25. So, But again, the one thing I would suggest getting a Home Patrol 2 for is that it does run on four AA batteries, but it's a nice desktop radio that has an SMA connection on it that will plug into a wall that will stay on your desk. But if you ever lose commercial power, it does have batteries in it. So you can use it without having to wire it into something else and it will stay on your desk. And it's kind of one of those deals where it's nice to have a radio that will always be ready for you on standby. And again, if you turn that radio off, it can default and go into weather alert mode. So not only do you have a scanner on your desk, but you also have a weather alert radio when you're not using it as well. So that's one benefit of having the, uh, the HP too. So let's switch gears here and let's talk about the Whistler product or Whistler Group. So again, we, we've, we've started our conversation with the WS1065 and the WS1040. Uh, two radios that only support phase one. So we're going to jump right over that. We're going to look at the WS1088 and the WS1098. So these are the uh, the phase two scanners from Whistler. They're about the three hundred and seventy five dollar price point U S. At least when I checked them today on Amazon, and it's pretty much right in line price point wise with the nine ninety six P two from Uniden. But here's the deal: 
it includes DMR right out of the box. Okay, so that's going to save you $50 over the unit in line. But it does not do Pro Voice. So if you need a Pro Voice, then this radio is not for you. Okay. Um, what's really nice about the Whistler WS1098, the mobile version, is that the front display is detachable. Now, some of you might be scratching your head going, wait a second, Uniden's got a detachable front face plate that was, um, uh, what do they call I actually just sold one myself because I, those, those things are crazy. The uh, RH, was it the RH96, uh, 96 something. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I had one of those. And again, that took Uniden's proprietary serial cable and they got rid of that on the 996, which makes that, on the older piece of hardware. So there's no way to really remote mount a 996P2. But this Whistler one, the WS1098, all you need is a LAN cable and you plug that into the front of the, of the receiver and the back of the detachable display and you can remote mount the display on the scanner. And it's a real sharp looking display. So if you're looking for something that, again, like the 536 and 436 and the HP2 also has the radio reference database in it, that's your WS-1088 and your 1098. And again, that's the same price of the unit in 996P2. All right, so let's get to the top of the line Whistler models, the TRX-1 and the TRX-2. These are two radios that I wish I had gone out earlier and purchased. Um, I'm sad to admit that I don't own either one of these yet, although I am really drooling over them. Um, I just really didn't have a reason to go out and buy one. And now that unit is coming out with the SDS 100, it makes the um, it makes the radio funds that much more important to decide where I'm going to be spending my money on. So the TRX-1 and TRX-2, just like the earlier WS-1088 and 1098, has the radio reference database stored onto the micro SD card that comes with the scanner. It's pretty much the TRX-2 is the same platform, uh, same chassis, same everything else as the WS-1098. The TRX-1, though, is a ruggedized version of, um, of their handheld radios. The nice thing, though, about the TRX-1, TRX-2 is that it does add NXDN on top of DMR. And the price point on this is around 480 US dollars. So again, 480 US dollars gets you NXDN and DMR, whereas the 436 or the uh, 536, you still needed to pay to upgrade into that, right? So you're still, if you don't need Pro Voice, you could save some money by going with the TRX-1 or the TX-2 if you also needed DMR and NXDN. So that's really where the whistle line kind of pulls ahead here is uh, is on the upgrades that that you didn't requires you to get. So again, you still have the front detachable uh, faceplate on the TRX2, which is really nice and really sharp. So again, we will have some affiliate links in the show notes at scannerschool.com slash session 16 for all these radios. We'll do a quick write up for you. And if you happen to use any of those links to purchase any of those radios, that uh, scanner school will receive a very small affiliate fee for the sale of the radio, but at no additional cost to you. So it makes for a really nice and easy way to support the Scanner School podcast. So I did mention earlier that there were um, some ways in place at this point now to support the Scanner School podcast. And uh, again, I'm, I'm very humbled by it and very happy to see that some people are contacting me, asking me how they can support the Scanner School podcast. Uh, this wasn't something that I was going to really push or like that but since people are asking uh I'm, I'm making this available to everybody who kind of wants to support the scanner school podcast and it really had me thinking of ways that i can make it easier for somebody to help support us um so it led me down a, a path of kind of trying to figure things out here and, and think about them so i created a page on the scanner school.com website and it's called um you can go to support so basically go scanner school.com slash support and from there, I have a couple of very easy ways that you could help us um, keep going. Now, if this sounds like your local PBS station asking for donation supports, well, that's kind of what the method is that I'm using here. So there's there's a couple different ways. And the first one is free to you, which is great, um, which will be the way that I, I'm most comfortable with <laughs> because it doesn't cost you any money. The first way is just to shop on Amazon if you're an Amazon shopper. 
come to our website at scannerschool.com slash support and click on our Amazon link and then go buy something on Amazon. If you use that link to buy something at Amazon, Amazon will give Scanner School a very small affiliate or commission fee for referring the sale to them. So it doesn't come at any additional cost to you. Item you're going to buy is still the item you're going to buy at the same cost. But if you click on our link and then go to Amazon and then make the purchase, Amazon will give us a small credit for the sale. So every little bit does add up. And, um, you know, it's, it's a good, easy, and free way to support the Scanner School podcast. Another way that we looked at was Patreon. And Patreon is really the PBS model. And that allows you to pledge monthly on how much money that you're able to help support the Scanner School podcast. Now, you can, obviously, you can pick the amount of money you're comfortable with in spending. But there's also a couple of tiers that we've set up. So for a dollar, you can, you know, support. That's just the entry level. Um, No benefits on it, but um, it's just one of them that I had picked just to get the process started. And currently at this time, I have a $5 tier. And a $5 tier tier allows you to get the podcast earlier than the general uh, public release of the podcast. The $10 tier will allow you to get exclusive video content that I will be producing for my Patreon supporters. And let me back up here too. What's nice about Patreon is as you go up the tier, you get all of the benefits of the lower tier. So if you went in at $5, you get the $5 benefit. If you went in at $10, you get not only the $10 benefit, but the $5 benefit as well. So at $20, I will send you a piece of Scanner School merchandise, uh, either a coffee mug or a mouse pad or a t-shirt or something like that as a way of saying thanks. And at $40 a month, you will have me on retainer to ask me any questions about scanning on a one-to-one platform. So this is a discount rate of my 30-minute consulting sessions where you can have me for 30 minutes to ask me as many questions as you want within that 30-minute session or one session lasting up to 30 minutes. You can't bank your hours. So you can't say, I want six sessions at five minutes apiece. <laughs> no, it's one session or 30 minutes. And... Um, it's at a reduced rate. And I only have that one limited to 10 people because that's where I feel like I can comfortably support per month. So if anybody gets in at that $40 level, they will get me on retainer for one session or up to 30 minutes a month. Uh, any questions that you have on a one-to-one basis, plus you get the merchandise, plus you get the uh, the video content, plus you would get the podcast a day or two earlier whenever I have it ready for release. The other way that we've had set up, we just talked about, merchandising. So I'm working right now with a couple of online shops to get some designs out there for coffee mugs, mouse pads, t-shirts, those kinds of things. So if you have any ideas for any type of merchandise that you'd be interested in maybe having on your own, um, let me know and I'll put something together and and get it out there. So we will have an online shop where you can actually go out and buy some Scanner School merch. And uh, the final way that we have set up right now is just a one-time donation via PayPal. So you can go into PayPal and make whatever it is you're comfortable making. And, um, you know, it's a one-time donation. So it's not like Patreon where you're going to get hit monthly on it. This is a one-time fee, one and done. All right. So for everybody who has has asked about how to support us, these are a couple ways that I I worked out that you could support the Scan School podcast. And, of course, we'll be very grateful for anybody that can support us in one way or another. But again, if you want to support us and you're not ready to make a purchase, a great way to really support us is to go on iTunes and leave us a positive review or any type of review. You can do so at scannerschool.com slash iTunes. And that's another great way to help support the Scanner School podcast. So before I leave, I want to remind you that you can find us on social media at scannerschool.com slash Facebook scannerschool.com slash Facebook page, which is our closed community for other listeners of the Scanner School podcast, and on Twitter, scannerschool.com slash Twitter. I want to thank all those that have been a member of either our our Twitter uh, stream or of our our Facebook group or a fan of our Facebook page. And for those of you who have also been attending our Facebook Q&A sessions, which run live every Saturday. And again, if you can't make a live session, you can always catch the replay And if you have a question that you would like to have answered on the live Q&A, you can always submit them earlier by going to our Facebook page. Again, scannerschool.com slash Facebook. So until next week, I want to say 
thank you so much for being there and being a listener of the Scanner School podcast, where we teach you everything that you need to know about the Scanner Radio Hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and I will catch you again next Tuesday, 73. Thanks for listening to the Scanner School podcast. Be sure to visit www.scannerschool.com to access the show notes and bonus content.